I believe in my heart that you are going to be richly blessed. Because the person that is coming to speak to us is going to speak from spiritual point of view and from professional point of view. Because by the grace of God, he's a trained medical doctor. And he gave up his profession for the service of God. And today, an anointed preacher needed every part of this nation and outside this nation. I have the honor to welcome Reverend Dr. Apoki. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you for gathering us. We thank you for the privilege of hearing your word. There are those richer than us who cannot hear you now. There are those more intelligent than us who have not known about the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a privilege to know you, a privilege to be called your children, a privilege to have kept us alive till this day. Lord, there must be a purpose for arranging this meeting. We pray, Lord, that that purpose be fulfilled. Lord, our lives will never be the same again. Give us a calm spirit to learn, a humble spirit to put into practice the things we will hear. Lord, we pray that we will replicate the words we will hear in our lives and in the lives of others around us. We thank you and we worship you. Glorify only the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Please sit down like a king. And remember, kings don't make noise on their thrones and kings don't sleep on their thrones. I'm indeed very grateful to God that I'm here. I was supposed to be speaking somewhere else in Lagos today, but when the invitation letter came, considering the, the value I attached to my foundation, I had to honor it. In Igbo land, there is a saying, in a way, mad way, way, there are those who own every human being. And I consider that the Church of God mission has put so much in us. When people celebrate us within and outside this country, we always remember how we got to where we are now. I want to thank my first pastor, Bishop D.C. Akonye who nurtured us when we didn't know our rights from our left, tolerated all our inadequacies, and here we are. I spoke somewhere recently, Dr. Mrs. Ado was there, and the mama, Akonye, was there, and I was put in between them. I nearly got nervous, but God helped me. <laughs> Mama, you're looking like a unibengel. What are you eating? That is powerful. Praise the Lord. I want to thank our mama, Mama Fiano. God bless you, ma. Our bishop, Fiano, I'm always, he's always living when I'm reaching there. I was living about when he came. He was in Okigwe to preach some time ago. He preached, then I came there. I thought I would meet him today. I want to thank him for giving me the honor to come and speak here. Mama, extend my greetings to him. I'm sorry I've not met you before, but I'm glad I'm meeting you today. I thank the leadership of the church for um, extending 
invitation to me. I am also glad that you came. There was a time I was to speak to thousands of people in Akwaibom. One of our churches came. I canceled the program. I told the bishop to call the organizers of the program that my bishop wants me to come and speak. And he did call them. The program they booked one year in advance. I canceled the program and came to the church. I was surprised to see only about 20, 30 people for a convention. I was disappointed, so I had to warn the person that came now that don't mess me up. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be sharing with you on raising a fulfilled child for greater works. But before then, we came with a lot of books and CDs that will help you. The Principles of Mary Magdalene, Managing Competition, The Principles of Tama, and a host of CDs that will help you. Raising a fulfilled child for greater works. What is raising? Raising is to nurture the potentials in that child is to groom. When Diana Spencer died, her children did not cry like ordinary citizens. Because they had been groomed to become kings, they cried with princely courage. That is, they did not cry like ordinary men. They had been groomed. It means to culture. It means to train. If you read in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it says, train up a child the way he should go. And when he grows old, he will not depart from it. To train is not to flog. To train is not to shout at. To train involves specific instructions that fit a personality that fits a certain age bracket with expected responses and results, usually with repetition, reward, reinforcement, and rebuke. Let me just define that a little bit. Let me explain that. Michael Jordan was asked to throw a basketball and miss it. That is, he was, he was to deliberately throw a basketball and miss it, miss the loop. He had to throw it 11 times before he could miss it because he has been conditioned to getting the loop. Does somebody understand me here? So to train involves repetition. When the thing becomes repetitive, the subconscious reacts involuntarily without meditation. That's why you slam on your brakes without thinking. It, has, it is out of repetition. You repeat it, you, you, you continuously. The word train is from the Hebrew word shanan. To shanan means to cast into a mold. The thing is engraved in the child. I don't cross lawns. I don't cross lawns. If you, the sign of somebody who went to a good school is that he does not cross lawns. Government college, you really, you dare not cross a lawn. The day I, 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 the day, and you don't, I don't drag my feet. I walk smartly even if I'm tired. I don't drag my feet. The day I dragged my feet, a man called Dogubo used an electric iron to hit my head. He said, dragging your feet is a sign of mental laziness. And so I don't, I, don't, I don't drag my feet. I don't bite bread. I don't put bread inside tea and bite it. It was ingrained into my subconscious. By repetition, by reinforcement, and then by rebuke. Am I speaking to somebody here? The problem, why I'm saying this, is that most parents don't have time to repetitively tell children because faith comes by hearing and hearing. Sometimes we don't have objectives. 
we don't have what we are looking for. I told my third son, I say, you should have a PhD by 30 and you should marry into your own building. At 30, you should have a PhD and you should marry into your own building. And so when I read an economic book that, has, that was written in 1786, that tells the stories of most economic successes, I take it to him and I share them with him and we philosophize. Before going for youth service, he's, he's, he's going to be 24 in November. He's already a millionaire. He has not gone for youth service. Because repetitively, my, 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 my eldest son, by, by next two months, I should be in Europe for his graduation in medical school. I repeatedly wrote on his palm, professor. Professor. I will carry him into the theater, even though it wasn't the best in the country. But I will write in his hand, professor. Professor. I was, I was repetitively engraving it into his subconscious mind. Professor. 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 When I discovered that medical practice was not profitable, don't look at me like that. As a medical doctor, you can never become the general manager of Shell. You only become the general med the, the medical director. But the guy that wrote Red Economics can become the general the, med the director of Shell. So medical knowledge is a boxed knowledge. That's why some of us are doing other courses and reading other things to make us more relevant to our society. When I found out that medical practice, medical knowledge was not too profitable in this generation, when I wanted to discourage him, it was already too late because it has been ingrained in his subconscious by repetition. So it involves um, repetition and then with specific expectations in mind and milestones expected and pursued. A child is an offspring, usually biological, but could be an adopted child like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, who was the founder of Apple, his father is John Gendali. John Gendali is a professor in America. He's a Syrian Christian. He befriended a lady called Catherine, and when the lady was pregnant, Catherine's father saw that the daughter was pregnant for a Syrian and considered the offspring nonsense and said, get rid of that rubbish because a Syrian and an American was not a good combination. And so Catherine migrated from where she was and went to another town and delivered Steve, Steve, and put him up for adoption. But she had a request. Let the child be adopted by an intelligent family that will give him sound education. And Clara and Jacob Jobs adopted Steve, named him Steve, and he grew up to found the richest company in the world. When the biological father now realized that Steve was his son and sent for him or requested to meet him, Steve said, you are not my father. Clara and Jacob are my parents. Even when he had cancer of the pancreatic gland and he needed liver transplant, the father opted to bring suggestions he refused to accept. Because the man who raised him up, who gave him life and gave him purpose, was Jacob, and the woman was Clara. In Africa, we see adoption as a failure. It is better to have a Steve Jobs adopted than to have 22 Pekinses who are biological and are useless. <laughs> Child is not age-related in the emotional and relationship sense because as long as the parents are alive, the offspring is still a child. They found out that during the First World War and the Second World War, when men were injured, 
they shouted mommy, even though they were adults. And so even though they were adults, qualified and old enough to go to war, they were still children. And so a child is an offspring. For census purposes and maybe medical purposes, a child can be usually somebody below the legal age of voting, which varies from between 16 to 18 years. What is fulfillment? Fulfillment is a feeling of contentment and satisfaction based on the attainment of an expected result or objectives in life. When I was in Abad, they were calling me doctor, but I was not fulfilled. I knew what I was born to be. I knew the kind of life I wanted to live. It's only now I am living the kind of life I want to live. The kind of respect I want to get. I've always wanted to be celebrated. I had problems with one of our bishop's wives. She wanted to treat me rubbishly. I hate that. I hate that like, like mad. I don't take it. Because ingrained deep inside me by my mother is that I should not take nonsense from people. And any time I'm treated like shit, I don't feel fulfilled. Any time I can't meet expectation, I was used to coming first. I was told I should be first. I was told when I went to government college that I'm trained to become a leader, that we are the leaders of tomorrow. It was ingrained in my spirit. And any time I perform below expectation, any time I am in the, in the midst of people and I'm given a responsibility, and I don't meet expectation, I don't feel fulfilled. I was to preach with Wale Oke and an American somewhere in uh, Humphrey Rumaka's church. And there was uh, uh, a British man, an American. There was the American man, a medical doctor like me from America. When they introduced me, he refused to open his, open his Bible until I took the microphone I said, when I noticed that he did not open his Bible, I made up my mind to blow his brains. I raised the frequency of discussion to another level, and the voltage was high. Then he opened his Bible. Then I noticed that he opened his Bible. Then I raised the frequency. As I raised the frequency, he brought out his camera. When he brought out his camera, I changed my posture. somebody, stand up and tell somebody. Stand up, stand up. Tell somebody Jesus is king of kings. And not king of slaves. You are a king in the kingdom of God. You might not be a traditional ruler. Find a domain in life. Superintend over it. Reign over it. I didn't hear an amen in this place. It's a feeling of contentment and satisfaction with expectation for improvement based on the attainment of an expected result or objective in life. It is the emotional state devoid of inferiority complex. Devoid of inferiority complex. Then if I were me, son, was in the last fuel subsidy demonstration even though he was in a wheelchair. He said, my condition does not prevent me from carrying out the dreams of my father. Even though he was handicapped, he was not brain cap or destiny cap. Am I speaking to somebody? His physical limitation did not blur his vision. The problem with life is that when men set an objective that is too physical, physical limitation can create inferiority complex. I don't need to be as tall as yourself. I don't need to be as handsome as yourself or uglier than you or fatter than you. You don't need to know the price of my suit or the price of my shoe. I have a purpose I am pursuing. I don't need to be a more pie. If you will say, hey, 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 hey 10,000 people fall down, I will preach my own message that will make them stand up. I don't need to be right hand bonky. Right hand bonky can open 20 blind eyes. I will teach them how to build houses. So, 
immediately identified that uniqueness is the key for fulfillment, I started to pursue it. Somebody point to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I no one resemble you. Tell your neighbor, I will not live according to your impressions. Tell your neighbor, if you are fatter than me, I'm thinner than you. Tell your neighbor, if you are more handsome than me, I'm uglier than you. Tell your neighbor, you cannot dream your dream and dream my own. Tell your neighbor, as you are sitting on your chair and I'm sitting on my chair, so life is. You cannot live your own and live my own. You cannot dream your dream and dream my dream. I didn't hear an amen in this place. Because the church lives like a community and a colony. We practice colony Christianity. We all want to resemble each other. The reason I said this is that it is the confidence that you are on course to attaining the purpose of your creation, irrespective of what has happened or what can happen. Dr. Farah Gray, who is coming to speak in Nigeria here, was living in the slums, some of the um, um, poor houses in America, but he became a millionaire at the age of 16. Millionaire at the age of 16. Ben Casey was black, but became one of the best doctors in America. Lexin Carrera was in, um, um, in um, um, Malawi, in a town called Tumbuka. And very early, I will come to some of those things later, heard about America and Booker T. Washington. And he said at the age of 17 in 1957, when he, he, he said, I want to go to America to school. And he trekked. 3,000 miles. It took, him, it took him one and a half years to reach, to reach Kampala. And he wrote to a school in America that I have been trekking since 1957. Now it's 1960. I want to come to school in America. I left home with only Pilgrim's Progress, my Bible, and an axe. I want to be like Booker T. Washington. When the professor, the vice chancellor, the president of the university heard about it, he said, come. I will give you scholarship, I will give you accommodation, and I will give you work. When the students of America heard about it, like in Kaira, they went into the streets and begged for money to buy a ticket for him. But he still trekked from Kampala, from Kampala to Cairo, to board a ship. And in 1962 or 1961, he arrived in America, and he became a professor of English. Today he's in Cambridge University. He wrote a book titled, I Will Try from an obscure background. When I see stupid children from Okere where I grew up, I grew up in the mud house knowing that I have a destiny that is more than a mud house. That my father was a refuse collector does not mean I will be a refuse collector. I had a dream I needed to pursue. Even when I had no books to read, I stood awake. I used to flog myself to stand awake to read. Even though the books were borrowed, even though the shoes were other people's own, even though the coats were borrowed, I made up my mind. From this mud house, I was going to become somebody. You reach where I live now. It's like a hotel. I live in a hotel setting from a mud house. The picture of the mud house was in one of my Bibles. I don't know where the Bible is now until last week. Anytime I opened the Bible and I saw the picture of the mud house in Okere number 12 Oki Street, I always told myself the next level is possible. We bought the first set of lands for our university. I bought, I was with your father, I was showing him the place. And he told me my first vice chancellor would live in his house. I bought the place. My wife does not truly believe in the vision yet. Because she woke me one morning. You see, must you tell every person, what if it doesn't happen? It will happen. I won't die until it happens. Because vision can determine longevity. A man said, until I carry Jesus, he will not die. His mates were dying, he refused to die. Until you have something you want to live for, and you pursue it to an end. Fulfillment remains an illusion. Remains an illusion. Remains an illusion. I want to build a university. I want to build a university. And I will build it. My pastor told me I need 500 million. I said, yes. The time I am ready, 
500 million will be available. If it is not available, the law will be changed to suit me. And God called down drought into the whole world and caused Pharaoh to dream because of Joseph. So fulfillment is not working in shell. Because even Muslims walk there. And there are many people who retire and become poor from shell. Fulfillment is the fulfillment of this scripture. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Which is the summary of the born again experience. Not falling and breaking plastic chairs. Fulfillment is that we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. To do good works. Prepared in advance. There was a work, there was a vacancy and because God was looking for applications from people that was why you got born again. Not to go to heaven. Because eternal life starts now. It also has, it also, it also has eternal life. I was preaching in a place in South Africa. When I finished preaching, the woman said, do you know Papa Idahosa? I said, yes, it's my Papa. I said, no wonder you preach like him. When I was preaching, he was seeing Idahosa. So eternal life is not living forever. Eternal life is when you continuously live in people after you have translated because it starts now. Am I speaking to somebody? It starts now. And we are going to come back here for 2,000 years. So build these houses well. Make them fine. Only three and a half years we are going to stay there. If any Jehovah Witness people enter, we drive them when we come back. Mary Slessor did not get married. But she is more remembered than all her contemporaries who got married. Am I speaking to somebody here? Johnny Erickson Tada, in 1967, dived into the Chesapeake Bay and hit her head against an object. And she was paralyzed from here down. And she said, I wanted to be a preacher. They said, you cannot preach any longer. You cannot even graduate. She went to university in a wheelchair, graduated in a wheelchair, wrote books with her mouth, preached on television, preached on radio station. One day she was on her wheelchair and a man approached her. God said, I should marry you in a wheelchair to help you fulfill your destiny. When life goes beyond the pursuit of divine purpose, it becomes very comparative and competitive. And when life is comparative and competitive, there is no satisfaction. Because like our pastors of today, our relevance is on our jeeps. It's on our jeeps. But no matter how big your jeep is, there's a bigger one. It's called, that mentality is called a hedonic treadmill. A treadmill is when you go for exercise and you're walking like this, you're not progressing. Hedonism is the seeking for enjoyment. They did a research recently, and they told people you are going on a cruise, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a cruise ship, and the ship is like this and like that. And they got to the harbor, and they were so happy that they were going on a cruise in the Mediterranean. Then they saw another bigger cruise ship, and immediately they got dissatisfied. The sea is the sea. The cruise is the cruise. The atmosphere is the atmosphere. Just the size now brought confusion. Am I speaking to somebody? Fulfillment is in the pursuit of purpose. I, I preached in Madagascar. The president of the country asked that my tapes be played in his presidential jet as he was going to France. No cripple walked. No blind eye opened. <laughs> I was just giving them economic ideas. Economic ideas on how to better their nation. That is what, when I go for missions, that's what I go for, economic missions. And I get fulfillment. I, I am not, I am happy at Raihan Bonke's crusade. But that's not my calling. If we can know that, there will be peace in our churches, peace in our families, and peace in our lives. There's always something in another person that is not in you. That's his unique selling point. But there's also something special in you. I preach with all kinds of people. When I preach with Chidi Okorafor, 
He will preach powerfully on holiness and righteousness. People will start crying. That is anointing. Me, I'm not anointed for cry. I'm anointed for laughter. So when I come after they have cried, I make them laugh. And they always invite me again. Am I speaking to somebody here? A woman came to Ugeli and cooked popo gari and pork. And it was named after her. Fenia Ibadere. She had no child, but she trained all members of her household. When I said this in Odibo branch, somebody said, she, she was my auntie, she trained us. I asked in Lagos, Fenia Ibadere. I asked in Port Harcourt, Fenia Ibadere. Asked in Benin, Fenia Ibadere. A woman who had no children, with only popo gari and pork, she trained all her sister's children and left a legacy behind. There are some big companies today we will not see any longer. Nitel is no longer. But Badere Popogari is still there. They are still selling it where she started. So I want you to live here with a hunger. What was I born to be? What is my child born to be? Because we want to mold our children to resemble somebody else that they are not created to be. My daughter is very fashionable. Not like me. When she dresses, she likes fashion. She, she, the things might not be, I thought they were expensive in those days. I didn't know they were very cheap. She is selling, selling. Mumu Okere Man. With so much poverty background. When I see her, and you know, ancient Christianity. The lipstick is too much. The earring is, are you one Mariam? The boy that wants to marry her will like that one. She was designed to be somebody else. Different from me. Am I speaking to somebody? I do not need to mold her to be like her mother. You know, resemble your mama. That my mama, I designed her to marry Dr. Pokey. What did they design this one for? The guy, they different from your daddy. Because we are, we are forcing children to become what they were not do you know I would have been a better comedian than a doctor? I would have done better than basket mouth. The person that read medicine in basket mouth, the person that read medicine in basket mouth family, is he more popular than basket mouth? The person that read engineering in Agodai's family, is it more popular than? The, 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 the man that made first class in, in engineering in Côte d'Ivoire, that went to primary school with Didier Drogba, do you know his name? Am I speaking to somebody here? So, in the amplified version, it's, it's a modern the child according to the peculiarity of that child. Find out the peculiarity of that child. Now, fulfillment is only found after self-discovery, knowing who you are. The discovery of purpose and the pursuit of it. To such an extent that you have a balanced self-value. Self-concept and self-esteem. You know, I, I, I made up my mind very early. I was not going to be a professor. I was not going to be a consultant. Because I wanted to battle poverty. Some few years back, the state government called me to lecture consultants in the state. And they were going to pay me per hour. I, I charged the, con the company per hour. As I got there, my juniors who were consultants were there. My seniors who were consultants were there. In fact, some of my juniors are professors. The commissioner was there. The permanent secretary was my senior at Federal Government College. I am not all that I have called. I'm still me. When I sat down, I was put behind a board because the big men occupied, according to them, occupied the open places. And they were taking them photographs. They could not photograph me because I was covered. Then it got to my turn. And I manifested. It's not only demons that manifest, though. <laughs> and I manifested. Everybody wanted to take picture with me after. Everybody. Everybody wanted to take picture with me. There is a uniqueness in you that you must not you must discover. 
there is, a, there is a value God has placed on you that you must discover. Particularly you women. When your, your value for yourself is the price of your wrapper, then your brain is not yet complete. When the value for yourself is Mama Joshua, that means without Joshua you are finished. Do we know her husband's face? But we know her. Praise the Lord. Now, greater works. The reason, I'm defining greater works now. The reason we were born or children are born is not to have someone inherit your property. It is to provide a better you to establish the kingdom of God. The reason my father gave birth to me is that I should be an improvement on him. And my son should be an improvement on me. That must be grounded in the minds of children. That was a statement my father made when I asked him, Papa, why are we poor? And he said, I know go to school. He said, but the school, when I know go, go. The book, when I know read, read them. Or even when I know fit speak, speak them. We are not fit carry this name, go, carry and go. Until we see our children as ourselves, the latest models of ourselves for the purpose of influencing society to know God, then we will miss the mark. We will miss the mark. Better models of ourselves. Better models. Greater works does not necessarily mean greater anointing. Because some of you will go and fast and have stomach ulcer or think that you need to be the ulcer. No. Greater works is only doing something in a dimension or in a fashion that surpasses what has been. Your anointing might not increase like Joseph's anointing. Joseph's anointing did not increase beyond interpreting dream and management. But it was the, the level of people he was interpreting dreams for that mattered. I don't know if somebody's and the platform that was provided. If you are to raise up a fulfilled child, you must deliberately, deliberately call joy in him that you are born to be greater than me, not to collect house rent from my properties. Dangote is, 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 is a, a, Dangote's mother is the same father and mother with Dan Tata. It was Dan Tata that gave Dangote 500,000 naira loan to start business. But Dangote is richer than Dan Tata. Am I communicating here? Now, you must provide the network. That's why you see when Bill Clinton is going for campaign, it goes with Chelsea. So that Chelsea gets used to other presidential candidates and senators. You must deliberately create a platform for your children to manifest. If it is not created, you must build a network that will determine their net worth. I will come to that. You know, don't understand me. You know, they follow me. Eh? You know, most of you who work, let me use Shell for an example. I don't know why I'm using Shell. You will work in Shell you will retire. None of your sons is taking over from you. Yara Dua, his father was minister for police affairs. Yara Dua became, his brother was chief of army staff. Yara Dua became president. His two daughters married two governors. His younger brother was a lieutenant colonel. Platform. The reason I sent my son to Ignidion first 
was not because of anything. So that So that if he wants to fall in love, no matter how. <laughs> am I talking to somebody? Here? No matter. Why are you looking at me like that? You, you. Don't you know what I'm talking about? I don't know who you marry. I don't know who your papa be. I don't know who your brother marry. It's the thing. Am I speaking to somebody here? We must remove mumurity from our brains. Love is not enough to raise a good family. Love is not enough. You need... Young babes, if you are a babe here, shine your eye. Don't fall in love like mumu. Shine your eye. Udwagas wife. The father was a governor. So she's addicted to government house. Joel Austin. His father was John Austin. The lead singer in that big stadium is Jemine Lee. The daughter of Dr. Lee. Father's call. Whose mother is a Russian. When an anointing stays in a family for long, it becomes an inheritance. Do you understand? Kolenda, Kolenda, Kolenda. His grandfather was a pastor. Raised 11 sons as pastor. So the anointing on Kolenda is not only by fasting and praying. When, when, when an anointing is in a family for long, it is only in Africa that our children say we don't want to be pastors like our father because pastors are poorly paid. They suffer. Jimmy Swaggart Sr. is there. Jimmy Swaggart is there. Then the grandson will say, I want to play my, my grandfather's message. I will teach you later that anointing can affect genes. So to raise a fulfilled child, there needs to be an identification of the gifting of your family. A good street in Benin, carving is a natural. When an anointing stays in a family for so long, it becomes a tradition and custom. You don't struggle to manifest it. The problem with Africa, the problem with Nigeria, is that we do one work, our children go and do another one, we start all over again. But the Northerners are wiser. As one is leaving immigration, another one is in immigration. It will become... His father entered with school certificate. He will enter as graduate. Um, uh, um, yeah, there's somebody in uh, in uh, in uh, in INEC. The father was speaker. Ask your neighbor where your brother stay. needs people who are elevators of his anointing. He needs proper placement for his network. A platform high enough for advertorial enlargement. I know that in a bit to over-spiritualize this topic, you will hear about being prayerful, about studying the word of God, and about the Holy Spirit endowment. But there are very many prayer warriors who are a disgrace to the faith. In fact, I have hardly seen a rich prayer warrior. Because their eyes are always closed, they don't see opportunities. Sometimes the more prayerful they are, the more stupid they become. There are very many mobile Bibles that are wretched and a shame to the body of Christ. And likewise, there are many tongue-talking, chair-breaking, and quaking brethren who are a burden to their families. There are specific issues that we will look at now to raise a fulfilled child in addition to prayers, studying the word of God and being filled with the Holy Spirit that will make raising a fulfilled child very possible. Chickens cannot produce eagles. Neither do dogs produce lions. You cannot give what you don't have. 
That's why we now do genetic counseling. If there is diabetes in a family, it is highly possible that it will flow. So if somebody's mother is diabetic and the sister diabetic and that one diabetic, and you are marrying into another diabetic family, the chances of diabetes prevailing is very possible. If somebody is AS, another is AS, my wife is AS, I am AS, but we don't have C-class, but my child can never try that. She should look for somebody with AA and marry. Because the challenges of raising sickle cell children is very stressful. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Schizophrenia or a form of madness runs in families. Runs in families. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Echondroplasia, Sheku. How many of you know Sheku? Sheku runs in families. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Hemophilia runs in families. If you can avoid it, avoid it. When you see a red flag raised, if you don't have the faith, it is not good to bring an innocent child to suffer in this world. Like as I said earlier on, there are some specific anointing in some families. Ngojo Konji Iwala, the father is a professor of economics. The mother is a professor of economics. So economics runs in their genes. Rotimi Williams' uncle was Sabara Williams, a great lawyer in Lagos. Rotimi Williams, senior advocate. Laddie Williams, senior advocate. It has been found out that graduates, it's easier for their children to become graduates than illiterate children. So, you don't deliberately, you, you don't deliberately, you don't deli you, you don't deliberately go and fall in love with an imbecile if you want to be a professor. I'm a worldly man. Don't mind me. You will see me in heaven. You, you, you must ask yourself, what, what, what am I looking for? Do you know Nati? Nati, they used to act poverty in village headmaster. I mean, in, in a masquerade. Do you know he's also poor in real world? It is true we are born again. But check. Is there a trend that runs in that family? Are you able to confront it prayerfully? Do you have the faith? If you don't have the faith, what you want out of life, is it visible in them? Is it visible in them? That's why the rich tend to marry among themselves. That's why the elite try to marry among themselves. Because sometimes the spirit of not being able to do well can be transmitted because it is attitudinal, not necessarily demonic. So you must ask yourself, this family, do they have it? But genes alone is not enough to raise great and fulfilled children. A proper environment matters. A man called John Crabb, a behavior geneticist at the Oregon Health and Science University has shown from studies that genes alone cannot, cannot determine the, the fulfillment a child will have. That raising a secure child requires a good environment, a good emotional environment. According to Daniel Goldman, who wrote Working with Emotional Intelligence, Emotional Intelligence, and now he wrote the latest book, Social Intelligence. He said that, he said that the brain is 
programmed to grow, pre-programmed to grow. But usually, when a child is born, the brain is about 400 grams. Within the first two years, it will grow to one kilogram, 1,000 grams. <clears throat> that is, the maximum time of growth of the brain is within the first two years. And it is most willing to absorb then. Are you catching me? Therefore, the way the mother treats that child, what the mother ingrains in that child within the first two years will lead that child nearly throughout his life. Because that's when the brain is developing neurons, connections. An adult has a brain of 1.4 kilograms. That's only 400 grams is added. <clears throat> but the brain continues to develop up to the age of 21. So, let me go back a little bit. It has been found out that children in the womb whose mother smoke are smaller. So drugs, alcohol, and even music can affect a child. Children born who are conceived in an environment where loud and violent music is played. They are born usually restless. Because the sound. When you come and add that to Gogoro that cl crosses the placental barrier, go to Wari and Tineta Ward. You will see the children there. Environment. An Igbo boy born in the north behaves differently from the one born in Abba. Eh? The Igbo boy born in Yoruba land behaves differently from the one born in Onicha. The one born in Owere, an Enugu, behaves differently from the one born in Abba. Or accepting a cocoon is formed around that child. So the, env the environment before, during conception matters. If Jesus, if, if John the Baptist could receive antenatal anointing, the spiritual environment matters. Then, when they reach the age of one, two, if and when the child is in the womb, start to prophesy the child. In fact, before marriage, start to describe your children. I described my children before I got married. And many of the things I describe, I am seeing. Because a child is a purpose clothed with human flesh. He said, before I formed thee in thy mother's womb, I knew thee. So young boy, young girl, speak your children now. You will see them manifest. Now, because of our time. They took children in nursery school and gave them biscuits. I'm using the word biscuits. It was a snack. I don't know the name in Nigeria. To eat. They say, if you don't eat your own, we will give you another one. They were four years old. Then, the parent, the, the teacher came back later and some ate their biscuits. Others did not eat. The ones that did not eat, they gave them another one. They took their names, followed them up for 40 years they discovered that who did not eat their biscuits in nursery school, their marriages were more stable. Because that principle of restraint in the midst of temptation eh, that was ingrained at the age of two and four stayed with them till they were 44. They could resist the temptation of adultery. They were richer than their mates because they could manage money. So that simple principle of delayed gratification. When your child cannot manage little things now, it's going to be very difficult. One of my children came with a receipt of land he bought, 2.6 million. He bought one last year. That one. When you give him pocket money, 
he will write how he spent the money and bring it to you. That was what Carlos Slim's father, Carlos Slim is the richest man in the world. He is a Lebanese immigrant. His father was a Lebanese immigrant to Mexico. Today, he's the richest man in the world. His father taught him to balance his pocket money. If he gives him pocket money in a day, at the end of the day, he will bring how he spent the money. Do you know Carlos Slim today? Mexico is one of the most violent nations in the world. But himself, his children, and his in-laws are different. Carlos Slim can spend a thousand dollars every minute for 100 years. He will not go broke. Train up a child the way he will go. Learn to put the principle that will make your child become something in future. Now. Because Sigmund Freud says that the personality of a child, of an adult, is formed 75% within the first five years of life. I give you another discovery. Somebody here, I will find out his name. <clears throat> he did a research. His name is Michael Mini. He's a neuroscientist at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. They took rats, two sets of rats. They studied rats and discovered that the rat whose mother licked him more within the first 12 hours. They had two sets of rats. Some mothers licked their babies with their tongue and then cuddled them. They discovered that the ones that licked their babies more and cuddled them, the rats became more confident, more intelligent, and manage stress better. And they found out that rats who were cuddled and licked and shown care by their mothers when they had children, they also cuddled their children and loved them. And the team progressed. So what are we saying? If you want to raise a fulfilled child, nurture him with love not house girls if you travel and you come back provide and I refuse to travel these few days you know why my last born started behaving differently he drove a jeep used it to hit a bus then he called me daddy I want to report myself before me, me, mommy will report me I said why so I drove the jeep and hit the bus. Not knowing, he also deliberately broke a pipe. So he was behaving funny. Then we sent a girl in their school to go and meet him. Call him. Why are you a cultist? He said, me, cultist. Do you know who my father is? My father is a pastor. Then why did you? He said, he said, he said they seem to love other children in the house more than me. And he's writing school certificate now. When I heard that, I told myself I won't travel. I won't travel far. Because I can be preaching all over the place. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and raises bad children? So I stayed. I would tell him, hug me. He started reluctantly. Until gradually, he started hugging me. Then I got closer to him. Discussed with him. Discussed with him. Then I started attending to him. Like the last, like a two days or three days back. Apart from the pocket money I gave to him to go to school. I had biscuit by the side. I was keeping to shock him. I just brought out the biscuit and gave to him. He looked at me. There was a laughter, a joy, and a bounce that came out of him that was not there. How many of you have lost children in the same house with you? Because you don't understand them. Some of you fathers, you are like sanitary inspectors. You are like Mopo. Are you the only born again man? 
you squeeze your face like a mortuary attendant. When you are coming to the house, everybody starts panicking. He's coming now. You are, you are, you are, you are Osama bin Laden. The children can't. My daughter discusses the person dating her with me. And we analyze. She calls me. So instead of going to discuss with somebody else, she seeks counsel from me. How many of you have sat down with your sons? How many fathers know the pains? I discuss everything with my children. I just carried a bottle of wine as I was coming out. I told him, my third one, I said, uh, Friday is my birthday. I know your mommy has not planned, but me, I have planned. So I'm carrying this bottle of wine. I will freeze it. If she's not ready, I will pop it for myself and congratulate myself. Because sometimes I don't trust her behavior. I say, come, let us travel for convocation. He said, no, go, go. No one enter the plane, no, be, no one go away. So the children say, I should drug her and carry her. You see? They say, we should inject her. When she's sleeping, we'll carry her into the plane. So that she will wake up in Europe. I asked them, what do we buy for your mommy on her 50th birthday when she was 50 some years back? He said, we should buy sleeping medicine for her. So, you know, it's like that. But many children here would, if not that their fathers would shout at home, they will raise up their hands if I tell them how many of you do your fathers sit down with to discuss. That involves this nursery school they will attend. A loving nursery school where they are properly, properly catered for. People ask us, why is it that your school do you know we carry, I carry my children on the back? My school children. We powder them when they are going back home. We create a sense of value for them. If you see their classrooms now, the new side, their toilets are like hotel toilets with showers. Ete, did I take you there? Ete? Did, you, did I take you there? My school. Did I take you to my school? I discovered that when children go to school without windows, they don't have, when they become local government chairman, they become stupid. And that's what is polluting this country. So, so you, you, the schools that we go to, and you must, you, must, you, must, you must create a sense of value. Thomas Edison, they asked in the school that he attended, is there any problem in this school? They said no, apart from Thomas Edison. And he cried and went to meet his mother. Thomas Edison, the man that invented the electric bulb, went and met his mother. His mother said, who said you are not intelligent? Let's go to your school. Went to the school and told the teacher, it is your school that is a bad school. My child is intelligent. Thomas, what is your name? He said, Thomas Edison, at least he knows his name. Where is your address? He called, he said, at least he knows his address. How old are you? He said, he said, my son knows something. Let's go home. Your school is a bad school. I said, we are going back home. Thomas Edison said, if my mother has confidence in me like this, I will not disappoint my mother. Don't send your child to a school where they say, she, 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 she. It kills the child. Destroys the child. Praise the Lord. So, the secondary schools they will attend will also matter. Government college really affected me so much. There are some things I jumped. Let me go a little bit backwards. When, for to raise a fulfilled child with involved good antenatal care, if a child is crying with wet nappies, and the child cries and cries and cries and cries, and is not attended to, if that thing is repetitive, that child grows up to become callous. He won't listen to the cries of people. When a child cries and cries and cries and cries and cries. In fact, 
One of the books I read, a man, an adult, graduate from a good university, well placed, but he was wanted to commit suicide because the pain he had when he had appendicitis and he cried till morning and was not attended to. That pain has created a mind in him he can't trust people. They found out that daughters whose fathers place on their chest when they are young, that they love their husbands more. That boys who breastfeed for long don't smoke because the urge for company from sucking cigarettes. That, you see, you, you, when the mother is not there, you give something to suck to calm him down and then he grows up. That sucking mentality transfers to cigarettes. But when a child breastfeeds very well, he doesn't smoke. So when the Bible says, train up a child the way he will go, it is from, from it is as we, as we keep laying these things, we keep laying layers, layers, and layers of things we want the children to become. The children will eventually become fulfilled. Now, there are a few things I will say, then we will pray. As the child is growing, the eldest son, the eldest son must be trained to know that he is a leader. A leader. If you run a family business, ensure that your eldest son is involved very early in that business. Very early in that business. Ensure that he knows the intricacies of that business so that foreigners will not manage his father's wealth to the ground. There's a man that owned a company in Abba. His son, apart from Getman, every unit of the factory he was involved. Most of the factories that parents owned in Abba closed down. But he, Starline Nigerian Limited is still on. Because the son was involved day to day. Prepare your messages with your children. Preach it to them. Drag them along. Where, where, where? My son, I tell him, let's go. Are you going to be a pastor? He said, no. He said, no. I said, in my mind, you will preach. So what did I start doing? When I come from travel, I will bring something for him. I'll take him to travel with me. Small, small. He started asking me, how was the meeting? How was the meeting? He hated me traveling the last one. Because anytime he asked me, are you going again? Preaching was something that was taking his father away from loving him. So when I come from the preaching, I bring the benefit of the preaching to him. So let your children know your business. The second son should be trained as a midfielder. As the one that will stand behind the elder and improve on the business. The last child must be trained like the senior one. Because like as I am now, I'm the last child. Every person has died, only me remaining. If I did not know leadership early, I would have messed up. So train the last child. Always drum it into his head. I will call my last child. Take this now. Learn from me. A time will come, you will be standing alone. I won't be alive. Your mother won't be alive. You will be standing alone. If it is by age, people die. So learn to manage yourself and manage your affairs. You will be looking at me and say, Daddy, you will not grow old. I say, I'm, I will stay alive, but I will eventually get old. I won't be as smart as this. You must pick up. And grain into them so much what they are supposed to be. Then, finally, identify the talents. Find institutions that can help them. How many of you watched the match of yesterday? Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. Who saved more penalties? The goalkeeper. Am I right? Um, Noah. Eh? He was goalkeeper for Schalke. Am I right? Do you know he started goalkeeping at the age of 10? At the age of 10. 
So he has been diving from the age of 10. How many of you know Serena Williams and Venus Williams? From when they were very young, the father said, I am going to raise the future long tennis champions, Wimbledon champions. And they became that. How many of you know Roy McIlroy, the golf champion? His cousin, who is six years, ten years old now, is already a star. He started playing at the age of six. In Western Europe, in Asia, in many of the emerging nations, they have discovered the secret that when you identify a man's talent early enough, Ronaldo went to a, 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 a football academy. If your child is playing the keyboard very well, find somebody to train him because talent pays better than education. Am I speaking to somebody? Develop the skills in them very early. Invest into them and always speak what they are going to become into them. Rafael Nadal, the long tennis man that played the clay court recently and defeated uh, uh, Djokovic, or what is his name? His uncle has been training him from childhood. There are so many deposits in our children, so many deposits in us. We must look around them, see what is unique in them, invest in them, and we shall have mega stars. Let's stand up to pray. your son, your daughter, your children were born to be. Have you, have you ever asked God? Moses' mother said, this is a special child. And crocodiles went on fasting and praying in the river Nile. Pharaoh's daughter came to take her bath because a mother saw the talent, saw the uniqueness. Open your mouth and tell God to open your eyes to see the uniqueness in your children. To see the uniqueness in your children. name. My bishop, sir. Um, the, the vice president, Namandi Sambu, went late for a program. The reopening of Kano Airport. The Emir of Kano had been there since 10. And the vice president of Nigeria came around 1 o'clock. And the Emir of Kano rebuked him. He said, we, the descendants of Utman Danfodio, Utman Danfodio taught us to value time and punctuality. Ma, Utman Danfodio, 18 something or 17 something, was teaching his children time management. Time management. 
Do you know that? Put man down, fold you. Have you seen an unemployed Muslim before? There is no unemployed Muslim. It's either a security guard as he's there selling sweet. Huh? It's either selling sugar cream. Commerce. That's what brought Timbuktu the Trans-Saharan trade. There are basic ingredients. Punctuality. If you are not punctual, if you are not courteous, if you are not humble, if you are not tolerant, there are basic ingredients we need to put into our children. We are too careless. Ask God to help you that when you live here, He will open your eyes to know the specific needs of your children so that you can plant into them. Open your mouth and pray. listen to my tomorrow, his topic on being single. You've listened to the, that, that message. The book. That today he's married and he's still single. That he's single and his wife is single. That there is no better half. That it is two single people that come to marry and still remain single. What is the definition of this singleness? Valuing your uniqueness your specific purpose and pursuing it. So if a girl is 40 and she's not yet married, do not pressurize her with the marriage issue. Always pursue, look for what is her unique, what she was born to be. There's one woman, Omoi Gui, that married eh? Federal Inner Revenue. It's not long ago she married, am I right? Last year. She was in charge of federal inland revenue. And she was a big babe. But she was a fulfilled babe. And then she married. Not all married people are happy. If are 90%. All these ones, pastors and their wives, stay in signboard there. If the signboard can tell you what is happening, You just see pastor and his wife. There's none here. There's none in this hall. You just see pastor and his wife. And if these signboards can talk. Me, I know they enter with my wife. Oh. If these signboards can talk. You will see signboard. Only signboard will stand like this. We start shaking. <laughs> it's the quarry from home. That papa and mama are quarreled. You will see signboard. Signboard will just stand on his own. Mm. <laughs> but we are moving on. So, better, you are going to get married, but develop yourself first. Value yourself first. Celebrate yourself first. By the time you marry, two of you will become celebrities. 